Example 2. Confidence interval using peanut butter cups. Listed below are weights, grams, of randomly selected Reese's peanut butter cups miniatures. They are from a package of 38 cups, and the package label states that the total weight is 12 ounces, or 340.2 grams. If the 38 cups have a total weight of 340.2 grams, then the cups should have a mean weight of 340.2 grams divided by 38, which is equal to 8.953 grams. So what we want to be able to do is the following. We want to be able to find the mean of these values here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So we want to find the point estimates. So what we can do is we can go into stack crunch and uh, what we can do is just put in our values. So we'll just call these Reese's and then put in each value 8.639 and then 8.689 8.548 8.930, 8 8.936, and 9.042. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to be able to find the mean of that. So in order to find the mean of those values, we're going to go to stat, we're going to go to summary stats, and then select columns. We're going to select Reese's, and then we want to find the mean of that, and then we're going to select compute. So there is our mean. Okay, now that we found our mean, we want to round it. So in this case here, our original data goes to three decimal places. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to round this to four decimal places. So the point estimate of the data is the sample mean. And if we round that to four decimal places, we get 8.8057. So therefore, that is the point estimate for those values. Okay, now that we have that in part B, we want to use the listed sample data to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the mean weight of Reese's peanut butter cup miniatures. Based on the preceding results, does it seem that the packages are being filled so that the total package weight is 340.2 grams as indicated by the label? Well, the first thing we need to do is do the requirement check. Well, first, the sample is a simple random sample. And number two, because the sample size is n equals six, the requirement that the population is normally distributed or the sample size is greater than 30 can be satisfied only if the sample data appear to be from a normally distributed population. So we need to investigate the normality. Okay, so what we need to do is find the QQ plot. So let's go back to StatCrunch. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and go to Graph and then select QQ plot. We're going to select the column for Reese's. And then we're going to go ahead and then select compute. We can put in the horizontal and vertical lines. And then let's select compute. So there is our QQ plot. So if we look at the QQ plot, we can see that the line here does approx gives us a pretty good approximation. So looking at this graph, we can see that there is a line that kind of can go through those points and nothing seems to be farther away. So in three, that normal quantile plot, the points appear to fit a straight line pattern, so the sample data appear to be from a normally distributed population. So the second requirement is satisfied. Now in step one, we want to be able to find the critical value. So in order to find the critical value, we need to go back and say, okay, well, part B, I want us to construct a 95% confidence interval. Since it's 95% confidence interval, the first thing is, is that we need to find alpha. 
and alpha is equal to 1 minus 95% as a decimal, which is 0 0.95. And that equals 0 0.05. And then in step 2, we need to take that alpha and then divide it by 2. So if we take 0 0.05 and then divide that by 2, that gives us the area of 0 0.025. Okay. So that means that when we're looking at the bell curve, we want to find the critical value that's on the right hand side. Again, this is the T scale. We want to find out what is this critical value here. Okay, so we're looking for that critical value. So let's go ahead and shade that area. Okay, now if we are using the table okay we first need to know the degrees of freedom and so the degrees of freedom is taken n and then subtracting one and we know that the sample size is six so if we subtract one then that's going to equal five okay now we know that the area here in one tail is 0 0.025. Now, if the area was in both tails, you would add them together to get 0 0.05. So let me go ahead and just show you here. here. So this value here, 0 0.05, represents the area in two tails. And this one here represents the area in one tail. So if we were using the table, we would need to make sure that we know that. So let's go to the table here. Okay, and then we're looking for the area in one tail, which is 0 0.025, which is the same thing as the area in two tails, which is 0 0.05. And our degrees of freedom is 5. So if we come over here, we're going to see that we get the critical T value to be 2.571. So we get 2.571. So because we know that the area and the one tail is 0 0.025 that gives us the critical value to be 2.571 now if I wanted to use stack crunch then I would do the following I would come in here to stack crunch Okay, and then what I want to do is I want to go to stat, go to calculators, and then scroll all the way down to where it says T. Okay, and so we're looking for the area in the right tail. So the first thing we want to make sure is put on our degrees of freedom, which we know is 5. We want to change this to be greater than or equal to, and then we're going to put in the area of 0 0.025. And when we do that, you're going to see what we get for our critical value. So our critical value using stack crunch is now going to give us 2.571 as well. So therefore we've been able to find the critical T value. Now we want to be able to find the mean and the standard deviation. Well from the previous step here we found the mean to be 8.8057. So we know that the mean is equal to 8.8057 grams. Now we want to find the sample standard deviation. So we're going to come back to stack crunch. Okay, and then over here what we're going to do is we're going to go to stat, go to summary stats, select columns, select the column receipts, and then we want the mean and the standard deviation, which we already found the mean, but we're going to go ahead and do that. So therefore, 
we're going to go ahead and then copy that. And then we're going to identify what is our standard deviation. So the standard deviation, we're also going to round to four decimal places. So rounding that to four decimal places is going to give us 0 0.2054 grams. So now that we have the critical T value, which is 2.571, we have the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Now we can find the margin of error. So here we have our critical T value, sample standard deviation, and N. So recall the following values. We know that the critical value is 2.571. We know that the sample standard deviation is 0 0.2054. And we know the value of n is 6. So we're taking the square root of 6. So the best way to do this is using our calculator. So let me show you how to do that on your calculator. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we use parentheses. So we're going to multiply the critical value of 2.571. And then we're going to multiply that by the standard deviation of 0 0.2054. And then press Enter. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of 6. So the second square root of 6. And then put an Enter. And then rounding it to six decimal places, we get 0 0.215589. So now we found the margin of error. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to construct the confidence interval with a mean of 8.8057 grams and a margin of error to be 0 0.215589 grams. So using our formula, we're going to take the mean and subtract the margin of error on the left side and the sample mean and then plus the margin of error on the right side. So we have 8.8057 minus the margin of error, 0 0.215589 on the left side, and we have 8.8057 plus 0 0.215589 on the right side. So now we subtract that value, we get 8.5901 grams on the left, 9.0213 grams on the right. And so therefore, the interpretation would be the following. We are 95% confident that the limits of 8.5901 grams and 9.0213 grams actually contain the value of the population mean. Well, how can we say that? Well, we need to go back and take a look at what was that mean up here? It was 8.953. So let me go ahead and copy that. And then let's make sure that this value is in that interval. So when you see that value of 8.953, okay, this value is in between those two. So since this value is in the middle, or not necessarily in the middle, it's in between these two values, then we can say that we're 95% confident that the limits of those actually do contain this value of the population mean. Now, if we were to collect many different random samples of six Reese's peanut butter cup miniatures and find the mean weight of each sample, about 95% of the corresponding confidence interval should contain the mean weight of all such peanut butter cups. Now, as we noted earlier, that the sample is from a bag of 38 cups and the bag is labeled as containing a total weight of 340.2 grams. So the mean weight of a cup should be 340.2 grams divided by 38, which is 8.953 grams. Now again, the confidence interval limits do contain the desired mean of 8.953 grams. So the package appears to have been filled with candy in an acceptable way. Now, another way it would have been better to obtain a simple random sample of six Reese's miniature peanut butter cups from six different bags from different regions of the country.